thinking about that. All right, so we got to go live. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Deji Yesufu. Uh, I'm back on um, the Reform Ninja um, network or broadcast. Been off for a while now, trying to meet up with a few family issues and also trying to graduate seminary. Today, we have a wonderful discussion coming up. Uh, we're just going to catch up on a little controversy that came up some times ago uh, around the Bola Are. I believe it's Bola Are. Bola Are. Uh, no, it's Tope, Tope Alabi. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tope Alabi. So I'm going to have to correct what is on Facebook. The Tope Alabi only drew controversy. Uh, we have our uh, uh, Dr. Muturayo from Canada. He's going to uh, give us a topic. Actually, he actually um, suggested the topic of discussion. Okay, so he's gonna give us a little introduction to the discussion. Then myself and Brother Peter are gonna chip in for it, and uh, we'll be looking forward to having your comments and questions as we go on with the discussion. So thank you for joining us. I hope you get to watch this. If you're not watching it live, maybe you'll be able to watch the recorded version. Okay, so uh, I'm over to you, sir, as I <laughs> put you on the spotlight. Why, 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 why do we have a Nigeria? You know, we have, we have uh, the controversy has been ellipsed by two other issues now. We've had uh, the latest one is um, Kiniti Babai in <laughs> Nigeria and drama. Okay, the latest one is um, uh, this guy, this, oh, the, this one that uh, DSS went to attack his house. Okay. Before oh, that, oh, that is a oh, that is a Igbo, Sunday Igbo. Sunday Igbo, uh, that's the latest. <laughs> and, he disappeared, and he disappeared as a cat, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so many things. I mean, I mean, if you don't pay attention, you just lose track of I mean, breaking news. But this is re relevant for us because we are Christian people and uh, we want to get worship right. So, while I try to edit the uh, mistake I made, I will just hand it over to Egmo uh, to uh, broadcast. Over to you, sir. OK, yeah, everybody, you're all welcome uh, once again. And uh, so it's just been on my mind for quite a while that we actually have a discussion on you know, the right praise and the right worship. And um, so when the Oniduro saga thing happened about two or three weeks ago, like, OK, this is a very good opportunity. You know, the, the common things you hear, or at least I was following the discussion, I try not to contribute them, was things like, oh, let everyone praise God and worship God as they like. It is between them and God. Uh, don't judge anyone. It is between them and God. Just focus on what you believe. But that's not the Christian faith. The Christian faith is about God's own revelation of himself, be it in nature or in scripture. He has told us what he wants. He has told us how he should be worshipped. Or at least to the best of our knowledge, we should follow those, not just come with um, what we think is the right thing. You know, our knowledge is so finite and we serve an infinite God. So, and we're gonna, so hopefully in our discussion today, we'll look at some scriptural uh, background foundation uh, to these things that we are talking about. You know, let me give a good, a good starting point here. Uh, in John chapter 4, verses 22 to 23, Jesus met the Samaritan woman. And I'm just going to read so that we, it doesn't look like I'm bringing this out of my mind. Anyhow, Jesus said to that woman, he says, you worship God. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Now, if you know, the very starting point that was, you know, the woman was making this argument on uh, where God should be worshipped, you know, she was pointing because she was a Samaritan and Mount Gerizim was a very, very important place for them. And so it's like, oh, God can be worshipped from this mountain. Of course, we know that in many instances, you know, Moses met uh, God at Mount Sinai and got the decalogue there and all that stuff. But Jesus is saying, that's not it. The very first verse there, verse 22 says, you, you worship what you do not know. So there's a knowledge aspect to the praise and worship of God. We cannot start giving God names that don't belong to him. And I was given an example. You see, one musician said, uh, Oni Duro is not the right name. 
some other musicians says we need to write the right name. Only wrote in my, my, my opinion is the right name, but we'll come to that later. It might, where I get off is uh, even more popular things like you are everything, uh, everything is you. God is not everything. God is separate from what he made. He's completely separate. So God is not everything. He's, uh, everything is not God. Because to say that is not biblical, it's not scriptural, it is pantheism. And we'll, hopefully in our discussion today, we'll explore that and see what the right worship is. Now, just a little warning here. Two young men, uh, Abi, uh, uh, the, the sons of uh, Aaron, their names are running away from my mind now. Uh, let me- I Nadab and Abihu. Thank you, Nadab and Ab Abihu. The Bible says, that, you know, they were, they were they are priests, you know, as much as believers today were called to be priests. They offer, the Bible says, strange fire in their worship. I don't know what the reason for their innovation was. But they offered what the Bible described as strange fires. And the Bible says God struck them there. Now, it may sound like I'm being extremist, but the point is, there is an example in scripture. In fact, not an example, examples. we we'll look at Isaiah 2, you know, about um, where, uh, how the devil, you know, Lucifer, you know, created as, an, as, a, as, as, as a being of worship and praise but then you know he, he rose up in his mind and uh, and began to oppose that which is god to not do things as servants as the ones who are redeemed and not follow the instruction of god as he's laid down as he's revealed to us is tantamount to rebellion and it's very very important that we get these things right we have to in insist on it so um during this week I, there was a there's this popular musician who was on the on the television show Your View, the popular uh, show in Lagos, and it's uh, on TV. And he says, "I'm not a gospel musician. I'm a gospel entertainer. What is gospel entertainer? You know." And then he, the, the man, he throughout the 30 minutes of talking, he cited one Bible verse. Uh, he says, uh, uh, there is no such, no such Bible verse in the Bible. He just made it up or he had it from someone and he presumed it's, uh, it's scriptural. And he's supposed to be the vice president, vice president of the gospel artist of Nigeria. We are in big trouble, uh, brethren. And we need to start getting these things right. If the foundation be destroyed, the Bible says, what can the righteous do? Bro Peter. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for that introduction. Uh, Brad Peter, are you available? Um, <coughs> our, uh, uh, Dr. Maturaya has mentioned Nadab and Abihu. Uh, Brad Peter, are you available? I'm not seeing his speaker coming on. Oh, well, Hello? yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, I, I don't know. Are there other biblical scriptures uh, examples? Because somebody might begin to argue that that is Old Testament. Are there any other biblical, um, you know, um, scriptures that we can bring up to support uh, right worship at all. Maybe I'm even taking it from the wrong distance. Maybe I should just hand it over to you. What, what do you think about well, this? Well, you well. Uh, okay. Um, actually, I, I don't think the argument about it being Old Testament will hold water because um, it was a, this scenario is perfect. It was a matter of worship, you know, so uh, and then God you know, made an example. It's like someone saying, um, God using Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, you know, as an example to, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, today we have a discussion about uh, the LGBTQ situation. And, you know, uh, people, they like to quote, unquote, discuss certain issues. And they ask you, what is your position? You know, what do you think? You know, so God told us what he thinks about this situation, about this discussion by what he did with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and neighboring towns, you know, by, 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 by igniting the hopeless and burning it to the ground, you know, thousands of years ago, the story is recorded for us in scripture. So we are never in doubt, you know, he doesn't have to do it again in the New Testament. So you remember that, that or you realize that his position hasn't changed, you know. So the, in the same way, God's position about worship has never changed in the sense that uh, Dr. Motunaya has has uh, you know uh, uh, he's, he's even alluded to well some things from theological sources where it says that god is set he says god is separate from his creation god is not everything you know so god is very prescriptive you know in how he's to be approached and how 
he's to be prayed to, in how he's to be worshipped, in how we are to live for him. You know, unfortunately for us, he's the only one who does this amongst all the other false non gods everywhere who have never spoken a word to anybody. <laughs> you know, so um, so we are to keep to the boundaries and the limits, you know, of 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 scripture. You know, in our worship of God, and this is something I didn't even know it was this bad. To be honest, I switched off following you know these trends, you know, a couple of years ago. So, you know, just to maintain my own sanity, <laughs> you know. So, but I remember I did uh, I remember I did hear that uh, a very popular song. They, you know, there are like a couple of churches right beside my house. So, anytime they're they're in the spirit like this, I hear everything, all the prayer <laughs> worship, all the praise worship, and everything. And this was one of the songs they kept singing. And one day I paid attention and heard heard them say that you know that uh, everything is you you are everything you know it sounded so melodious and fits the song so well but it's 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 uh, <laughs> like i said earlier really, it's, it's very 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 bad theology yeah i you are going to say something sir before i went for peter was cutting oh no no um, yeah because for a, for a period there he there was a lag so i wasn't sure if he was on so that was why i was trying to jump in you know, oh, okay. one of the best definitions we're talking, since we're talking about the right praise and worship, one of the best definitions of worship that I've seen, at least in contemporary times, and I'll, I'll try and look it in with your idea of uh, something in the New Testament. God hasn't changed. God of the Old Testament is still God of the New Testament. But, and we have lots of references also in New Testament, but we'll look at this chapter. Now, one of the best definitions I've seen of this is uh, the, the Anglican Bishop, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury during the Second World War. His name was Archbishop William Temple. And he described worship uh, this way. Let me read it to you. He says, to worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God, to fill the mind with the truth of God, to purge the imagination by the beauty of God, to open the heart to the love of God and devote the will to the purpose of God. So again, if you tie that into what God, Jesus was saying to that Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, verse, uh, verses uh, 22 to 23, Jesus says we worship, the right worship is in spirit and truth. So we can start looking and break it down and say, first of all, we know knowledge in verse 22 you mentioned. So we need to know God. You need to know the God we are praising. You need to appreciate him, you know, the way he has revealed himself, whether it's in nature or in scripture, you know, what we call a special revelation and all of that stuff. But beyond that, is it says we, have, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, looking at uh, worshiping him in spirit just means that we are concerned with spiritual realities. It's not about a place like that woman was trying to point to in that portion of scripture. It's wherever we are, we are conscious of the fact that God is the all powerful, the all creating, our redemptor, our, the one who has provided for our needs and praise him accordingly. You know, it is not about outward appearances and sacrifices and cleansings, cleansings and trappings. No, that's not it. It's not about this sister is the best musician that's, that helps to make things melodious, but whatever it is that he has given you and in every situation and circumstance, we ought to know that because our God is in control, is always worthy of praise, is always worthy of worship, even in the worst of times, as Job went through. And now to worship him in truth means to worship according to the whole counsel, every single counsel of God by which he has revealed himself, of God's word, especially in the light of you know, his New Testament revelation. Uh, it also means that we come to God in truth, not in pretense or a mere display of spirituality. So now the question now is, what do you mean by God has revealed himself? Hebrews chapter one, verses one to three says, God has spoken through the prophet and now he speaks to us expressly through his son, you know? So the question, so if we're gonna compose a song and uh, writing it, composing it, writing poetry and all these things, you have to ask yourself, are we still talking about the same God or am I beginning to introduce elements and things that do not belong to that God. Because to say that about him, to say things that is not true about him, is to actually tell a lie. That is not the gospel. That doesn't bring praise to him, you know? So, so these things are pretty important now. But the Bible says in Colossians chapter one, verse five, it says, because of the hope 
laid for you in heaven of this you have heard before in the word of the truth. I'm just talking about the truth there, the gospel. So if you don't know what the word of truth is, Colossians 1, 5 tells us it is the gospel. There's no missing word about it. It is the gospel. So we have another example of that gentleman when they were bringing the ark. Remember him? And uh, he thought, you know, his act of worship was, oh, the ark is about to fall down. And then he tries to grab it. He wasn't supposed to do that. That was a wrong misrepresentation of the things of God. And what happened? Instant judgment, right? So God is to be praised in the beauty of his holiness. He has revealed himself. Look at Psalm 150. It says, uh, praise ye the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet, with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel, the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organ. Praise him upon loud symbols. Praise him upon the high sounding symbol. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. But that is not just saying anything or whatever seems to come to our mind. And it's not even about our praise, you know, things like everything that double double. How does that praise God? You know, is that a scriptural song? You know, if, if you want to dance to the music, that's fine. But don't, don't bring this thing and say this is a gospel music. It is not gospel music. It is actually paganic music, uh, pagan worship, uh, because it's all about what has God done for me? Uh, it's uh, what, what I want God to do for me. Not necessarily what God wants to do, because it's just not rooted in scripture. So what, what <clears throat> you have uh, led, uh, I mean, put your hands on something very important, but I want to redraft it in the form of a question now. What is the place of theology in worship? Is it possible that um, people can get uh, theology wrong and get worship right? Or is it possible that theology will always have to be correct for worship to be right? What's the place of theology in worship? Because you've talked on it, but I just want to uh, better streamline it with that question. If, if, you, if you have a wrong theology, you're going to have a wrong worship. That's just, that's just it. Let, let me bring up uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, just to illustrate the point. Uh, just give me a second here so I can, uh, I, want to, I want to quote this well. I'm reading from the ESV. It says, I appeal, this is Paul writing to the church in Romans. And it says, As I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the message of God to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And it says, this is your spiritual worship. Presenting ourselves right, as a living sacrifice and living and acceptable to God is a reasonable worship. Now it goes further, it says, and be not conformed to this world. If you look around us, uh, you, know, you know, Nigeria, Africa, and wherever it is we're looking these days, you see all this distortion of the person and personality of God and of his work and of his, and of his deeds. And if we're looking at that, that's why I've seen people say things like, you know, you Christians do this, you Christians do that, and then you came to worship God. But the point is this, very often, these are people who have actually deviated from the norm, from the way of God that is actually revealed in scripture. Now, verse two says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? By looking at scripture. So if we get our theology wrong, very, very, very likely, the worship will be wrong. I don't know whether Lucifer was still pray, trying to praise God, but the point was immediately he became high in his spirit and contemptible of God. It didn't matter what other kind of worship he brought. I'll give you another example. Remember the two, the two first children, Cain and Abel. It was all about worship. The one son brought mindless things. It's not, it's, it wasn't really, some people say, oh, it's because he didn't sacrifice blood. No, it had nothing to do with blood. It was the mindset. He was a farmer and he brought, he brought half hearted things to God in worship. His brother brought the best in appreciation of God. And what happened? God accepted the one worship, God rejected the other worship. That's the right frame of mind. Abel did the right thing. Cain didn't care. He was like a desical about the whole thing. And God rejected his worship. So we need to get our theology right. Uh, yes, I can understand, you know, people making mistakes and all that, but people need to remember that when you're standing in front of that altar and ministering, 
it's also it's you just as much a preacher as the man who's going to come after you to preach the gospel. So you cannot come and lift, say, let's lift up our hands and give names that don't belong to God, call him names that belong to the devil. And after that, you say, oh, someone else to come and correct your theology. It is very wrong. The, 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 that's why some of those old songs, the hymns that we sing, just read them, you know, and you sing those songs even before the message comes. You already feel exalted in your spirit. You are being blessed because those things speak directly. Now, I'm not trying to say there's something wrong with you with the prison and what should be with it now. That's not the point. The point is we need to get it right. We need to get the theology behind them right. Otherwise, we will be offering prison and worship that belongs to God to other beings that are not God. Yeah, so if we're going to really even begin to discuss the problem with the Onid Duro controversy, you want to go, you want to dig down to the theology that is producing the songs uh, in this uh, ladies, you know. Um, there, there is a sense in it that the original meaning of your need to which I think is uh, what is that again now uh, the word for it my guarantee yeah that it there wasn't anything really wrong with that you know but for Dr. Alabi to come and question it there might be a sense in it that even her own theology was defective in a sense you know but at the end of the day you find out that the whole gospel um, ministry or the whole gospel industry in Nigeria is actually functioning in an atmosphere where the theology is heavily defective. You know, uh, somebody was telling me, and this is going to be, this is a private discussion, and um, unfortunately I can't mention the name of the person since it's, um, it was a hearsay, but they were telling me about a, a popular gospel musician in Nigeria here in the Southwest who treats <laughs> Her, her aides, you know, drivers, and uh, it treats them terribly. You know, they said they can't, I mean, you can't, you can't live with her in the same house. She's so foul mounted and all of that. And this is somebody whom a lot of all these, in fact, during the only the real controversy, a lot of people were pointing to her as a source of inspiration. I'm beginning to wonder that if she had lived or she lives like that, I wonder what the, the other people coming behind her are, and the way they are living. And then while this person is even criticizing somebody for mentioning Oniduro, people went to her own archives and started digging her, her own songs, songs where she was singing and praising Yahoo Yahoo or saying God is Yahoo Yahoo and things like that. So you find out that really what is <laughs> what is undergirding the whole system is a defective theology. And uh, it's the same defective theology that led her to criticize uh, the Oniduro thing when she definitely ought not to have done that. Yes. Um, sorry, if I, if I could chime in to sort of emphasize what you both have said, I'm really happy um, that you touched on, on this. For me, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the centerpiece of this whole Ruhaha, which is that you get false worship, you will get problems with worship and praising and all the singing and songwriting and all the performance when there is bad theology behind it. Bad theology is, as far as I'm concerned, the root cause of all this. You know, so um, Jesus said in John 4 that those who must come to the Father, who must worship the Father, they have to do so in spirit and in truth. You cannot have right worship without the truth, right? You know, and yeah. again, I, I remember um, in, uh, towards the end of Job, Job 42, I believe, you know, where God was chiding, you know, was rebuking Job's friends. And he said, see, that you have not spoken of me what is right, you know? And these guys, all the whole time, they thought they were, they were, they were holding it down for God, you know, in front of Job, you know, before Job. You know, they thought they were defending God. They thought they were, you know, um, holding brief for God, you know, while Job is, uh, you know, uh, maintaining his innocence. You know, but then God shows up and says, you people didn't speak rightly of me. And in fact, if Job does not pray for you before, I will descend on you, uh, you know, right now for having misrepresented me. That's right. You know, so it is really, really important the things we say about God, whether it's in preaching, whether it's in singing, in public, in private, you know, and I, I really would want to advise, I, you see, I'm, I'm one of those who believes that um, we shouldn't only sing old songs like hymns, but we should sing old songs like hymns and also write new songs, right? But they must be based on scripture. 
they cannot they cannot exceed uh perhaps there's more to god not even perhaps i'm sure there's more to god than is revealed in uh, the revelation we have but you cannot exceed what has been revealed yes. right uh -huh. so stick with scripture you know sometimes i think the the the, the problem with these are our supposed praise leaders is that there's some kind of pressure for them to be innovative you know to come up yeah. with new, to come up with new things and uh, you know to uh, you know so in in that pressure to you know to be creative you know that you know, so they end up you know going outside of the bounds of scripture whether or not they intended to you know and then we have uh, situations like this but it's really a serious serious thing worship is uh, is a very very serious thing it's not something it's not a secondary issue it's not a secondary issue it's something that we have to take very seriously and people must be careful what they say about god yeah even when they think that they're praising him that's right. Dr. Adetola, you want to add something to that, sir? Yeah. The, the, when this whole Only the Road thing started, uh, there was a, one of my sisters, uh, Sister um, Titi, you know them. They, there was a discussion, long discussion on her page. And then she went to the extent of actually compiling names. This is in Yoruba now. Names of God, you know, that we know that are biblical and all that. And I thought we we're going to get a very shrunken uh, number of names. In, in, um, in size 12 font, I printed it out. It ran to 10 pages. 10 pages of the names of God. I, I was I actually, surprised. I, I actually, I I actually unmu unmuted to just say wow to that. <laughs> yeah, 10, 10 pages. I actually, I told her also, maybe we're going to continue this at some point. I told her because she seems to have a lot of knowledge on on um on this thing like to come out to give me the names of like yoruba names yoruba ways of praising god and names that is being called that are not scriptural and she says she's, she's working on it for for me now 10 now we some very often we tend to think you know there's this thing in nigeria people think that those people those pentecostal people they know how to preach and uh, those other people they, they are not very good in preach. i don't know where this idea comes from but i was digging back into the 80s and listening to some of those music that uh, many of those people these people in Kerubum and Seraphim. I mean, I don't know if you, you guys know songs like Apata Aye Raye, Apata Aye Raye, Sheibi Sadini, Jekiomi Oweje. I mean, you listen to that, to that album from beginning to the end, gospel, pure gospel. Kerubum and Seraphim, white garment people. You know, any day, any time, I would listen to that song uh, uh, because Every single time I listen to it, it just ministers the, the, the gospel again to me. You feel baked in the gospel of Jesus Christ than listening to uh, some of these modern people are bringing out as junk. Now, let's not make any mistake about this. We can come to God just as we are. God accepts us that way. But we may not come to him in any way we please. And there's a distinction. We can't come to him any way we please. He has, where he has given us ordination of a certain path to follow, names to call him, certain ways to worship him. And I've given example, you know, you know, Cain and Abel, I've given of Nadab and Abihu, I've given up that man who was trying to hold, uh, you know, the Ark of Covenant wrongly. Uh, I, we've talked about, uh, you know, uh, Paul, you know, writing to the church in Rome about what true worship is and on and on and on. We are to follow along with that. that. That's the way it's supposed to be. And there are so many melodious songs that are forefathered. I mean, this is a 20 centuries or 21 centuries of Christianity. And what exactly happened previously that those people got it right, and we are beginning to just, you know, take the things of God very frivolously in song, you know. And sometimes you see disheveled people coming to lead praise and worship, you know, half of their half of their skin out, and then we say, oh, we are living leading praise and worship. It doesn't matter. Let everybody just praise God the way they like. And then people will say, well, what are the example of that prostitute who was with Jesus? And then I asked them, did, did she remain a prostitute? <laughs> she was a prostitute. She wasn't a prostitute when she was serving Christ. Okay? You know, when, 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 when God calls a man, he bids him die to self and alive to the things of God. Time to start taking this thing seriously. If I, when I listen to some celestial uh, song, album, and they preach gospel more than those 
of the Pentecostal people. And then you go to ask yourself, what's going on here? What's going on here? These are people who are not supposed to know the Bible. And their songs actually is, is God praising, God elevating, you know, God, you know, lifting up the majesty of the names of our God. And then you see the, the tongue talking. Uh, <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> yeah, so Corinne, Corinne on our way, yeah, yeah. one of us, uh, been our guest before, left a comment on Facebook, said, one of the songs we sing, anywhere better they carry me good they go, anywhere better they go. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going, I'm going I, out I, of you. I, I, I don't even know that song. I am, I, you know the song. I am beginning to suspect. I, I'm beginning to suspect Corridor. How did you know that song? <laughs> yeah. In my in my children's school, they sing this song uh, on their assembly, and uh, I I've, I've not been able to convince them that there's something wrong with this song. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. Yeah. I need the life of the I, I know who I am. <laughs> so I, I try to make them to understand that worship is not about you. Or who you are, or what you want to become, no. what about God, you know. But I mean, my children just love the the tune, and I just allow them. Hopefully, someday they will get the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe if I might uh, just uh, try um, add this other example that just came to mind. I remember I some a couple of years ago when this song was ringing, mm -hmm. and I think it was even you, Brother Did you, who told me that some some churches in the Bible were singing it as part of their praise and worship. This one yeah. where it says. Uh, Macaulay Marale. Benny, Benny. Yeah. Hello, say my motto. My motto. My shag will show my shag water. So it's it's. And then there's I, a cousin there. You know, some people will some people will shag with the potter. <laughs> but, but honestly, I think this thing that we are laughing to really is not a laughing matter. Oh, it's God will help us. There was something I wanted to raise. But Peter, are you done with your comment? Yes, I am. Okay, there was something I wanted to raise uh, because now we have established that worship is uh, must be rooted in right theology. But I remember that when I became a Christian, the book that I read that really helped me to get the Christian life. It's a book written by Alti Kendall. He called it Worshiping God. And he said, he defined worship. He said, worship is a response to the preached word. Worship is a response to the preached word. So in a sense, the preached word is right theology, right? The, that mean, the preached word must be right theology. Yes. Okay, in fact, worship, bad worship will be response to bad theology, while right worship will be response to right yes. theology. Yes. Okay. However, when the theology or when the sound gospel comes forth, to the preach word comes forth, something must happen to the heart for there to be appropriate worship. Okay. So you realize that worship is not even something. It's, a, it's like a spontaneous response to what God has done in the person's heart. Okay, so first of all, the person who is worshiping must be a converted person. Must be somebody who has had the gospel of Jesus and has a new heart, has a new perspective. He knows what God has done. Okay, those of us in Reformed cycles want to emphasize the fact that the person who is converted has realized that he was heading to hell but God, through mercy and through grace alone, not by his effort, chose him and put him on his path to, to heaven. Okay, so when you realize the extent of salvation or how much Christ went to save you as a sinner, there should be a spontaneous response to what God has done. And then God graciously begins to send, I mean, write uh, hymns or write songs, and then begin to listen to those songs and realize that these songs they, they, they perfectly, I mean, uh, explain what, how you're feeling in the heart. And then you are, I mean, in um, how I call it, uh, spontaneously speaking those words back to God and saying, thank you, Father, for what you have done. I think that is when some of us begin to even appreciate uh, the, this age hold hymns that we, we I mean, that, I mean, you, we, I mean, our fathers used to sing. Because a lot of them were rooted, number one, in a heart that is changed, and then number two, in sound theology, and then number three, in a heart that is properly responding to the preached word. What do you think? Do you think that we can say that worship is response 
to the preached word, like an uh, Archie Kendall stated in his book. Uh, Dr. Adetola, I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't no, <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a it's a heart it's a heart that is a, that is receptive and understanding of the mind the heart of God you know in the in the perfect work of redemption that can do that um, and it's not like we don't have many 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 songs uh, in uh, and in the Nigerian environment in our Yoruba subculture you know that have done this very very beautifully in the past you know. And, and people need also to start looking, at least the, I, I hope the, the younger musicians, uh, people who are dictating uh, the pace these days will, will take example. The, the growing up, there was a wonderful man in Ibadan. He's a CAC pastor. I think his name was Esu, I think you back then. One of the songs, you know, I was very, I think I was six or seven or eight, thereabout. He sang this, and it's still in my head till today. It says something like, it was the story of Ezekiah, for instance. Ezekiah, or Baincha, is song. Lord John, one. Wuli, so from Pe, or Jotty, Betty, yo, Pilebura, Isaiah, Latimo, Be, or Bani, Latiku, O Basso, Bebe, O Badura, Color, O Baum, O Boa, Dura, and on and on. Now, if you read that story, that's the story of a king, loved by God who messed things up and God pronounced a judgment upon him. And he was truly repentant, came to God and God forgave and added base to him. You listen to that kind of song and say, wow. It tells you something about the graciousness of God, the benevolence of God, you know, the majesty of God, the God who is so mighty, the one who preceded everything and yet, speaks to a mortal, concerned for a mortal. Even in, even, in the, even in the sickness of Hezekiah, or at least the things that were prophesied, Hezekiah repented because he had a heart of flesh. And so we are also supposed to have, when we come to the knowledge of our errors, not like King Saul, this king, Hezekiah, did right. That's what the gospel is about. It's all to be God-centered, not we-centered. Once the praise and worship is centered up around you, centered upon you, centered upon your aspiration. It's not about your aye. It's not about my aye. God will bless us. God has blessed us. In fact, it's not will. The Bible says he's already blessed us. You know, he's made us to sit, you know, in the heavenly places. That's, that's a given. Now we're supposed to return the praise and worship to him, not about a year to Dara. And, and we shouldn't get it wrong. So people like Artie Kendall, you know, thanks for reminding me of that name. I, I, I've read some of his books, but that was many, many, many years ago. Uh, are pointing us in this right direction, you know? Let's just blend it. Let's have all this, let's have the Nigerian blend of music, the Yoruba blend of music, the Igbo blend of music, but let it be rooted in theology because it's part of the evangelistic work that God has given to us. So that just like this song I sang now, when people sing it, one day it just may ring a bell in their hearts, you know, as the, as, the, as the Holy Spirit quickens it, that this is pure charisma, you know, here, this is just the gospel and it just sinks in. Well, if all we sing to them is uh, uh, everything, na double, double, na double, double, or oh, masha, gulu, lo, si, pota, you're even cursing people. You know, why, why, would, why would we be saying that people will become crazy? Because that's what that song is saying. You know, people will, people will become crazy and they will start picking rubbish all the way to Potakot. And, and that's supposed to be Christian. You know, we, we need to review these things. And I hope, I really hope that uh, this will get to some people, uh, either aspiring artists or those who are already there, uh, so that they can start looking in scripture. So when they write this song, you know, the funny thing about the only the thing was the lady who was criticizing the younger musician says, when the Holy Spirit gives you a song, then you are supposed to digest it. And I'm like, does this woman understand what she's saying? The Holy Spirit gave you something and you are going to digest it because you are superior to the Holy Spirit or what? <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught that in the, I, in I the got it. <laughs> video. You know, it says when, the, when God gives you a song, then you have to digest it. That's what she said. And then digest it and then you come and release it. So 
God gives you something and you are going to now finance it. Who are you? Another word to censor, to censor it. You will censor God. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so um, I don't know whether you guys put up the story uh, because uh, about a few days or a few weeks, maybe a, few, a week after that, the whole thing had bludgeoned out. Uh, Talk by Alabi actually came out with a, a message or a letter of um, apology where she apologized to the lady she criticized. And um, she said that uh, a lot of people reached out to her. And incidentally, Egmo, when they are going to say this, they will say people reached out to me from Canada, from America, from Netherlands, from France. They say, I want to me my car. <laughs> Those of us. Those of us that are in Nigeria that were shouting, our own voice don't matter. It's the people who are speaking to you from Canada. <laughs> from Canada. People reach out to her and uh, she has seen where she was wrong and she actually apologized. So I just wanted, maybe we can round up with this. What do you No, this... I'm asking myself, no, one point, one point though. This thing about, uh, you know, I'm apologizing. Is it, is it an apology because she recognized that what she said was theologically wrong? And that she didn't reach out in the true spirit to this younger musician, or is it because things like I heard that uh, she had about 4.5 million Instagram followers, and we, by the end of that first week, that had descended below two million followers. Really? Is it because of the blowback? Because a lot of yeah, is it because of the blowback? You know, there's one thing about you know repenting because you are caught, mm -hmm. and repenting because you truly know that ah, what I said or, or what I did or and my conduct has been you know, despicable. You know, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves. So is, there, is it because people from Canada and America and England reached out, you know? Is it because what I was expecting is to come back and lay out the theology. I mean, she's probably the foremost Yoruba musician, if not the foremost Nigerian musician at this moment. I mean, we have people like Panam Pesipo. Come let us worship and bow down. I mean, these were songs in the 80s, they still can't keep blessing us theologically, you know, right. You know, you could you could check, check the boxes like that. And, and they're still there, those songs keep blessing us. They are they are, they are, they are there for ages to come. I mean, until Christ comes there. And then you listen to some of this, it's just pure problem. Uh, you know, I mean they're very sonorous. For me, a song has to check two categories: theologically right and sonorous. Most of these songs are sonorous. They are good to dance with, but it's about our praise and not his high praise. And that is sad. That is sad. Rakita? Okay. I, I, okay. I, for, for me, I, I, I completely agree with uh, Dr. Motraya. And it's really sad, you know, what, what's going on today. You know, so when when he uh, maybe I just remember now when uh, he spoke about uh, Dr. Montreal, when he spoke about some of the lyrics from uh, some of the songs, you know, by even white garment churches in the eighties, you know, being more sound than many of the popular supposed Christian or gospel music today, you know, I mean, I I, I shook my head because you know we've had to we've had to debate that, but it just shows the, the progressive degeneration in the quality of theology in the general church, in the, in the Christian church, in Christendom, right? How that it's it's gone from, from bad to worse and from worse to, I don't know what else, and continued like that, you know, so much so that, like he said, somebody can come out and even, you know, I think the person on uh, TVC, on your view, I'm funny enough, I'm a fan of your view, the show, although I don't have time to watch it these days, you know, uh, to come and say that he's a gospel entertainer, I think he's telling the truth because that's what most of them are today. You know, it's really the focus is no longer about Christ. It's no longer about God as revealed in scripture. You know, it's no longer about being edifying when you're singing in, in the gathering of Christians or to a Christian audience. You know, it's about, you know, uh, entertaining them really, you know, getting them roused up and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, basically, basically a, a, a music genre uh, but uh, garnished with uh, Christian garb and Christ's name, you know. So um, my, my, my parting shot would be just to reiterate what we've said already, that worship that is acceptable to God must first and foremost be true. You know, it has to align with scripture. It has to align with the Bible. 
Um, and, and in fact, that is the most important thing because that is what everything else. If you say, oh, it's in spirit, it's in spirit. The way to know if it is in the true spirit is if it accords with scripture. <laughs> you know, so it's that's the that's the barometer to judge everything else. You know, and it is something that we must pay attention to. Yeah. So uh, if Lady uh, Alapi, if she's going to if she's going to repent indeed, uh, she would have to repent of bad theology. So much of the bad theology that forms the bedrock of uh, oh, yeah. music. Oh, yeah. uh, I think many others. Unfortunately, I don't know many of the other people that are there, you know, but so much of this sort of songs are produced. Mm -hmm. But, but you see, you see, Rodi, you sorry to cut uh, in on you again. Uh, you see, we are we, we are here. We are waxing eloquent about praise and worship that should be God glorifying and God focused and biblical and everything. You see, that's not the problem of many of these people out there. <laughs> that's not the problem. They are they are catering to a different audience. All right, God is not at the center of what they are doing. You know, so me, I'm not even hopeful that people like that will repent of anything or change anything. You know, I, I'm speaking to uh, whatever Christians are, individual Christians are out there to take heed to themselves. You know, because you wouldn't expect somebody who lives off, uh, you know, being able to come up with the latest, um, 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 uh, I don't know how to put it, you know, something that arouses emotional uh, feeling trendy music in the name of Christ, you know, to a mass audience, you know, to pay attention to scripture. If for many of them, if they pay attention to scripture, they are going to lose their audience, they're going to lose their followers. <laughs> you know, so I'm appealing to Christians out there to take heed to themselves and not participate in everything that calls itself Christian praise and worship to be careful what they, you know, uh, use their mouths to try to offer up to God. Do you have a shot, sir? No, no. It, me, me, I'm just full of, I'm full of all of those old songs, you know. I, I don't know if, if you guys know, remember this guy, Evangelist, I, I did, I did, I think his name, you know, he did something like Weri Longwa Asu, you know, that, it's, it's in the 80s too. And then he, there's another one, something about how to overcome when you are going through things like alcoholism and all that he gave and narrated uh, stories of you know human struggles and places in scripture that you can go to in that song and where you can get your victory where are those kind of musicians today and then there was this other one, the Weary Low one sitting was about a, a man who, who is mentally, who has mental illness, but is still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, these are the things. It's not just, yeah, let's dance. I mean, Sonia Day and Ebenezer Obe and all the Fiji musicians, they, we have a lot of them who can help us to just do it. No wonder we now have ministries in church, comedy. You know, people come on Sunday, you know, and uh, you know, there's comedy, there is mimicking the Ogapata Pata, and how does this praise God? You know, if what, what we're doing on the platform is wow. comedy. You know, it, we set it, we're practically erecting statues. That, that's, of, that's, that's, that's irreverent to say the least. Yeah, it's completely irreverent, you know? It, it, that's not worship. When we come on Sunday, I mean, we come one, one day in the week to come and worship God. Let it be worship. Let it be the high praise of God. Let it yeah. be exalting his finished work at Calvary. Let it yeah. be that he kept us alive to serve him. All of it must be, he is our father, we are his son. He's our redeemer, we are the redeemed. That's the kind of relationship, not to come and joke and, and entertain ourselves into imbecility in church. And, and to add to that, you know, you can really, really, really never, ever, ever exhaust the material available to create God glorifying song, songs and music, you know, that is biblical. The material is endless. Right, so there is no excuse to say that, ah, I beg, we have sung everything that can be, we, we've uh, written all the songs that can be written about this uh, redemption, about God, oh, Jerry. you know, so you can never exhaust singing about God's divine perfections, his love, never. his power, never. his glory, his holiness, his mercy, his condescension, you know, his wisdom. You, we, we have not even scratched the surface, you know, so I'm amazed when yeah. I see people 
you know, want to tickle the flesh and they are going the other way. I'm, I'm really amazed. It's inexcusable. Just imagine, just imagine what it is. 20 and four elders and all the hosts in heaven are doing right I mean, now and I what we'll be doing for eternity for eternity you know <laughs> no, I, I really sometimes i wonder if we were it's the same god we have our eyes fixed on i wonder i, re, I really wonder it's really oh an indictment what you said about no, there's a way there's a way there's a way some people can there's a way some people can see this discussion and say ah look at them they, they, you know, they think they know something. You know, it's just between you and God. Just praise him any way you like, really. <laughs> God doesn't want to be praised any way we like. He wants to be praised the way he likes. He, he has like self-described. He has self-revealed. And, uh, he, you know, just, I think, it, I'm not sure, I think it was Romans chapter 1, uh, verse, verse 20, 21 there about when it says, you know, that people have given the honor that belongs to God to every other type of creature. I'm paraphrasing, you know. Maybe I should open it and, and read. It's, uh, yeah, you know, it says it's Romans, Romans 1. Uh, uh, just give me a second. I type Romans 1. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll, I'll quickly scroll down to. Now my okay here I am. So in Romans one, is in verse twenty. Okay, first of all in nineteen it says because that which may be known of God is manifest. God has manifested Himself. That which is known of of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it to them. For the invisible things of Him, for the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We are without excuse. Uh, uh, verse 21, it says, because that when they knew God and they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools. I, I really have nothing to add to what Apostle Paul was trying to say. Now, we misrepresent God when we do things our own way rather than his own revealed way. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Aditola, for the discussion. Thank you, Brother Peter. So uh, if you're just joining us, we've been discussing the controversy around uh, Dr. Ababi's uh, Oniduro comment. And uh, we came to this conclusion. I believe that's what we uh, came to a conclusion. And that is that so much of our songs these days is rooted on bad theology. It's not biblical. It's not scriptural. And because of that, uh, people tend to sing songs that pander to the uh, flesh, that pander to what is popular. You know, Peter has mentioned the fact that if these musicians end up, if they begin to sing biblical songs, they are going to lose their audience, okay? And uh, I also added the point that, um, you know, when there's bad theology and there's no proper response to the preaching, what well, that means if the hearts are not even converted, there's a lot that is wrong, you know, um, about our songs and, um, uh, brother, uh, Dr. Adetola kept on referring us back to the 80s and even some songs in the 70s and 60s where people were really worshipping God. And uh, I think there's a direct um, proportionality between uh, where there's sound theology and then you have good songs or good worship songs. And as the theology deteriorates, then you're going to have the same thing reflected in the kind of uh, songs that uh, these people use. Uh, thank you very much for joining our discussion. We hope that uh, very soon we can come up again. I, I don't want to promise every weekend, but if we can come up again with a discussion, not probably between us or some with somebody as an interview, we will have that. Thank you, Dr. Adetola, for your time. Thank you, brother Peter Uka from Lagos for your time. Now, just bring the discussion uh, our broadcast on Facebook to an end. Now, thank you. And uh,